I'd like to welcome you all to this discussion on critical thinking and critical writing. I've given you a revision of Bloom's taxonomy, which is a kind of a canonical teaching um, theory, I suppose, that organises critical thinking skills from lower level, these 1.0 and 2.0s remember and understand, up to what are called, often called higher level cognitive skills or abilities which might be evaluated and create. Entering the community of scholarship and finding, you know, finding the gap in the thinking and making an original contribution. So if we define the argument that way, if I, on 6.0, if I held my finger over create and I said putting elements together to form a novel coherent or make a uh, whole or make an original product, is that an argument? And an argument definitely involves generating, planning, and producing. So is an argument one of the highest levels of creativity or one of the highest manifestations of creativity? It's just a question. I'm just thinking critically here. I'm thinking out loud, which gets me into trouble a lot of times. <laughs> I, I tend to think so. I think there's something creative in forming an argument. Um, but when we're talking about scholarly work or critical thinking and argument in that context, it's, it's creativity that is based in a consideration of other ideas, I suppose. So th there's kind of two parts there to argument, that it's not just dealing critically with all of this scholarly material or a situation, mm -hmm. and nor is it just coming up with your own original idea. Yeah. It's somehow bringing those two things together. So, so being able to understand an issue or a situation and then extend the knowledge of that in some way or to point out something novel or original or creative about it. I remember very early in my education, um, students in a class saying to one of the teachers, um, well, you know, um, I know what I'm trying to say, but I just can't find the words to say it. And I remember a teacher saying, no, if you really know what you're trying to say, you can find the words to say it. And I've always taken that to heart, and I thought that's, um, that's sort of the essence of what we're talking about here, is, you know, un understanding sort of requires being able to articulate. And you should be worried about overconfidence in your belief that you know what you're talking about if you can't say it. <laughs> and that will drive you on to be a better writer. In the United States, if someone's taking a class on rhetoric, they're not going to ask them to take a class on critical thinking. Like if they're taking a rhetoric and writing class, they're assuming that that will give them the critical thinking. And here, I had a degree director phone me a while back, and we were talking about, we were co-directors of a degree program, I will not name the degree. I mean, she said, I think students um, need to know how to think critically before they're put into a writing class. I said, put them in a writing class, they'll come out of it thinking critically. 
if, if they're in one of our writing classes, <laughs> <laughs> they'll come out of it thinking clear, uh, critically. That, that, that will um, take care of that. But I know that um, whereas the old rhetoric was considered to be theory of, a theory of persuasion, the new rhetoric is more a theory of communication. Um, Andrea Lunsford at Stanford University really um, pushes that idea. And if you're going to communicate effectively, you have to think critically about the people you're communicating with and the context across which you communicate. So it will be impossible, I think, to communicate well without um, thinking well 